Hey guys, welcome back to me being cheap and welcome back to part two of toilet paper. And this focus is on ways to save on toilet paper, both in uh, use and money. So why are we talking about this? Okay, so um, as I mentioned in some of our, uh, in the previous video, um, only about 25% of the world uses toilet paper. And we, um, as Americans, have become reliant on a product that, in the very recent past, there weren't a whole lot of people that were reliant on it. So, um, you guys probably still have grandparents around that grew up without using this. Um, so, the reason why I want to bring this to your attention is, number one, we have become reliant on a product. Now, this product does not cost a whole lot. Um, the toilet paper that I purchased is 83 cents a roll. So you're not going to get rich uh, by not using toilet paper. That That's not going to make you rich. Um, but um, here's some other information to think about. So we've become reliant on this product. I got my notes here. And um, this product is resource heavy. So um, if you Google this, if you put the Google on it, it one, one source says that it takes 37 gallons of water to make one roll of toilet paper along with <clears throat> one and a half pounds of wood and 1.3 kilowatt hours of electricity. And that's just for one roll. And I have done a little bit of math and on my end, just considering my use and if I were to use this toilet paper for just urine or just number one, um, I estimate that my usage is 81 rolls per year just for number one. Um, I have uh, Googled average amount and again this toilet paper math it's really hard to do uh, but it says that the average pers person uses between 100 rolls and 315 rolls per year. So that's quite a bit. So if you multiply that by the amount of wood that's being used and the amount of water being used to produce it, um, that's where it becomes resource heavy. Now, wood is a renewable resource. There are uh, crops of wood or trees that's grown just, just for this purpose. And then some toilet paper is made out of recycled paper. So uh, that is a renewable resource. But think about what happens if there's a drought or there's a disease that affects the trees. So something happens somewhere along the line, those trees are not available, okay? So that's that's one thing to think about, disease, drought, what have you. Something could interrupt the supply chain. Um, and 37 gallons to produce a roll of toilet paper, that's quite a bit of water if you think about it. Now, I don't know if that's accurate, this is not exactly scientific, but 37 gallons is a lot. Um, especially in large areas of the world where it, there is a lack of water and a lack of clean water for people to drink. So it's probably not the best use of our resources and it requires a lot of electricity. So that's the first thing to think about is it being resource heavy. The resources are renewable. Water typically is renewable if it's cleaned and not contaminated. And then also the trees are renewable. So what if, number one, what if something happened to the supply chain? Drought, trees, um, what if there's a lack of gas to cut down the trees uh, to transport the logs to the processing facility? Okay, so second thing to think about is what if you couldn't purchase this? So we've become very reliant on this. and. And if you see the news things, so like whenever there's a big storm coming, everybody's like, oh my goodness, I've got to get milk bread and toilet paper, milk bread and toilet paper. What happens if you can't purchase this? So let's say, okay, something happens to the su supply chain and for some reason, this product is not available. Okay, so maybe there's a lack of resources to produce it or something happens with the distribution and you can't, uh, there's there's not enough gas to truck, truck this product around. Or what if things happen where suddenly it becomes very expensive and 
maybe you don't want to be able to afford it because it's very expensive. The other thing that could happen is what if you, uh, what if you experience a job loss? Um, suddenly you're without money or maybe you're affected by the government shutdown. Again, this isn't going to make you rich by not using it, but, but these are just things to think about what if. So in the not too recent past, we were not dependent on this product. And I think, um, you know, if something were to happen these days and if toilet paper wasn't available, I think there'd be a lot of people freaking out. And that's why I'm talking about options alternatives, different ways to avoid using toilet paper or, or perhaps how to use less. So, um, it's really not feasible to stockpile. So my estimate, um, is that I would use 81 rolls a year just for number one. Um, I did pull off on a sheet how much I thought I would use. And then I attempted to use less than that amount and it didn't work. There wasn't enough, um, there wasn't enough protection against the moisture. So, you know, there are strategic ways of folding. Um, I did try that. It didn't quite work for me. Um, so for me to stockpile 81 rolls of toilet paper, that's a lot of space. And I do have a family, and so we're just talking right now about my use, but I would have to stockpile uh, toilet paper from my family's use as, well, use as well. So that's really not feasible over the long term to stockpile, you know, years and years of toilet paper, or even just one year. That's, that's a crazy amount, crazy amount to store. Okay, so... Um, Cost-wise, this is what I have come up with, and I know toilet paper math is really hard to do. The toilet paper that I buy is $9.97 for 12 mega rolls. This does not include my time spent going to the store to purchase it. And remember, I don't have a store in my town anymore, so I actually have to travel outside of town to purchase this. It does not include... Uh, my time, it does not include the gas and the wear and tear on the vehicle, and it doesn't include the tax. So $9.97, this is 12 mega rolls, 480 sheets per mega roll. This is a two-ply toilet paper. So there are two-ply, single-ply, triple-ply, what have you. Um, the cost of this toilet paper is 83 cents a roll. So again, you're not going to get rich. But I estimate that this roll probably lasts me about four and a half days if I was just using it for number one or for urine. Okay, so where I left off last time, I was talking about bidets and some alternatives to bidets. So many uh, places around the world, they will use a, a bidet, which is a separate fixture. Um, that um, it, it could be a separate fixture that you use to clean yourself or it could be an attachment on the toilet seat. Um, there are several ways to do this. There are actually some available relatively cheap that are piped into your um, fresh water line um, on your toilet, but it is cold water. So that is one thing to, to get used to. So I was talking when I left off about um, the sport bottles like this that had the little pop top. And a lot of times these are given away for free. You could use this. Um, they also give them to you when you have a baby. They're called a peri bottle, but they're, you know, they're collapsible. They're refillable. And then you could use warm water. You could even, uh, if you wanted to, you know, put like a little soap or something in this. So you could do that. Um, another thing you could do, and this has not been used for, uh, cleaning bottoms. This is, I actually got this out of my garden shed, but you could use... A garden sprayer you could pump it up with the little this little part right here give it some pressure and it's got a nozzle and you could reach different areas um, yeah so that's an alternative and in other countries and cultures where they don't um, where they don't have a separate bidet and they don't have one attached to the seat because not all not all countries and cultures have toilets that have seats a lot of them have uh, toilets that you squat on 
And I touched on when you're squatting, there's actually less of a mess to clean up. Um, but the, the other way that a lot of uh, cultures do it, um, this is actually my coffee mug, so this really wouldn't be used for this purpose. But um, a lot of places, you actually just scoop the water in a cup and then pour it um, on your bottom to help clean it. So those are some alternatives that you could do. So I would be curious if you guys have thought about this and what you would do if there was like a big job loss or suddenly this product wasn't available. Um, I can tell you there's a large group of people, and I say large, but there is a community of people that use what's called family cloth. And so people that use bidets will typically have like a towel or something or a rag that they can dry themselves with. Um, or some people, they just do the shake off method. Um, but there are some people that use what's called family cloth. And there's a lot of ways of doing this. And you can actually get like on Etsy or eBay and buy these homemade versions that um, they're, they're kind of cute. They're, you know, little squares. They've been sewn and then they've got snaps and you can snap them together where they form like a long chain and then you know put them on your toilet paper roll that's a lot of work to me um you know that's a lot of work i can tell you uh what i have done in my house um and this has saved a considerable amount of time and um trips to the store and storage uh, we keep toilet paper on hand um, my sons use that. Um, they do not use any type of cloth. Um, they, they don't do that. They're not the ones using all the toilet paper in the house. That would be me because I'm here all the time. I work here. And so that would be me that using all the paper. Um, I use cloth for number one. Um, a lot of people call it family cloth. A lot of people call it wee wipes. And a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, that's gross. That's gross. Well, not really. Um, you can if you wanted to rinse yourself off uh, before you used it. Um, and the other thing, uh, for those of you that have had kids, um, if you think about the number of times that they wet the bed or have wet their pants and all that stuff goes in the washing machine and that's what washing machines are for, they clean it. Uh, the little uh, squares of material, they don't take up a lot of room. And I keep a set separate, um, trash can, separate lidded bin, and you just use those, drop them in there, and then um, I will actually run them through a soak cycle um, before I do the laundry. So just, just in case there's anything on there, but um, it's just the liquid waste and that's water soluble. So it's not, um, it's not as gross as you think. Now, if you've kind of grown up doing this, um, you know, we had uh, kitchen towels that we used all the time. When I grew up, we, we didn't have paper towels. We didn't have napkins. So you're kind of used to things like that. Um, I used uh, cloth diapers on my kids. So, I mean, it's, it's not that big of a deal. Um, I'm a little bit beyond um, cleaning poopy diapers. So I don't really want to clean uh, poopy rags or anybody else's poopy rag. But um, just for number one, it's, it's a pretty good solution. It has saved um, a lot on the toilet paper and a lot of time um, and money and storage on having to get that. So it's a personal choice. I can't say what's what would work for you, um, but I would encourage you to take a look at your family's consumption and have a plan. What are you going to do on the what ifs? And I I personally did not spend money to get the cute things off of Etsy. I just ripped up old t-shirts. I cut up old t-shirts that were no longer uh, donatable. And I have a stack of rags that, that get used for that. All right. I hope this got you guys to thinking about the what ifs and how we have actually become reliant on a product. And like I said in the first video, um, we don't know everything that goes into that product and there are some chemicals that are used for bleaching and you are applying that product to um, a large area that does contain some mucous membranes so just think about it think about the resources involved and see if you can come up with some some alternatives for your family um, especially in a what-if situation all right thanks for watching have a great day